Hello everybody and welcome back to my next video on this channel. I said that in my previous video I would be getting a honeycomb yoke and throttle quadrant and uh, setting it up probably with axes and O's um, and I'd sort of report back the progress I made with that but thinking about it I've just uh, set it up and I would share with you the, my first look at it my first views I've had a, a quick flight and checked out how it's set up and how it's working and I thought I'd share with you what it looks like without axes and O's just straight out of the box plugged in and not fiddle with any settings literally just as it is um, so first of all I'm going to show you using my webcam uh, um, what the actual setup looks like in case you haven't seen a, vi uh, a close up video of it I'll be probably have if you're interested in the, one of these but I'll, get, I'll show you what I think of it anyway um, you're going to see some dodgy photography I'm afraid because I've only got an old external webcam that I've found in a drawer and it's um, stuck on top of a tripod so moving it around is all a little bit difficult and dodgy at the moment um, so there's the yoke set up and this is the throttle quadrant I'll, I'll give you a quick guided tour of it this is one of the newer uh which is the newest yoke they've made a new version and you can see that it's got an xbox button here in fact some of the strange marketing i've seen is that it's of course the general retailers don't really understand the product um, they just sell them and it says Xbox version it doesn't say clearly on the, most of the websites that it's Xbox and the PC compatible but there's a switch at the back to switch between PC mode and Xbox mode and it's plugged into my PC working absolutely fine so um, I wouldn't hesitate to buy that for this for the PC uh, I went for this one this one uh, partly somebody said that it might have better resale value if I don't like it I want to get to, to move it on because you have the Xbox market as well I think I'm going to keep it though because I like it so far and uh, one of the differences the uh, magneto switch when you move, move it to start it doesn't stay there it's spring loaded and flicks back to both so that's more realistic rather than clicking on you have to click it off again it's a minor point but there you are uh, the other thing is that it doesn't use potentiometers anymore for uh, detecting the yoke position in fact it's pretty well silent on that turn there's a little bit of bearing and spring noise but nothing like the creaks and groans that my logitech had developed so that's an improvement so no potentiometers it's actually using solid state detectors a uh, uh, hall um, magnetic detectors so hopefully that will last much longer than potentiometers which tend to wear and get dirty i've had problems with those in the past there are physical switches uh, physical switches for the electronic circuits the avionics and i don't know if you can see how it's marked up but for the general sort of light, exterior lights that you would need of course they're not going to match every single layout uh, they, they're in different aircraft or in different positions i think this is pretty much the says the 172 layout that they base this on but they, that's fine we can work with that as for buttons on the yoke well there is a, a magic hidden button around the back here there's a push button here and on the top here a push button the inevitable sort of eight-way hat switch and you've got these two rockers which rock backwards and forwards so probably elevator trim or something that's what they're allocated for automatically in fact you have to press both of them which I guess is a safety feature in aircraft don't know what it's like in the real world for that uh, but you can't accidentally change your trim by catching one button you have to deliberately press both but uh, that's something to think about and on this side here there's no button around the back totally blank there button on top so this button here and the white button on this side of the hat and the one around the back are all allocated for changing the views the cockpit view the interior view doesn't really program to the drone view um, but of course you can reprogram those buttons and this is the rocker switches that move left and right so again i'm guessing they'd be rudder trim that you'd be using for those for so that's it for uh, these buttons here and then there's a throttle quadrant now all the buttons on both the yoke 
and the throttle quadrant have the same kind of feature that they're not just on and off they actually have contacts at both parts so when you press that on that makes that circuit live that detector live press that way there's a different live uh, transmission happening from there uh, which means you can actually um, allocate two functions to a button it's not just on and off you could make it do two different things but it does have a few consequences for how you allocate and how you control um, what it does and we'll talk about that in a bit uh, obviously we've got the um, various levers you've got six positions here so you could have it uh, for a twin engine setup uh, you also get a set of uh, the control knobs come off you could have a, a set of controls there for uh, commercial you get those uh, once I don't know if it's Boeing or Airbus I can't remember which one it is you get I don't fly heavies generally I'm um, more general uh, aviation um, one of the weird things is the setup that they suggest where, where you place these um, in the manual doesn't work straight out of the box um, it doesn't detect what type of handle you've got connected to it um, these buttons here are just because this has a, a this has a toga switch on here so that you need to be able to detect your press your toga switch uh, these ones here would be used for the commercial with a, a thrust reverse lever so that's what these got detectors for so when if you want to change the allocation exactly where things are you have to change that in your software as well it doesn't automatically detect and reallocate so that's what I thought would happen it would detect what you plugged in where it's not as sophisticated as that so that's the setup I've got at the moment I've tried a few um, single engine uh, GAs to give it a test flight um, we've got all the different markings for uh, the different devices that you could plug in so you've got you could uh, have this uh, as your auto your speed brake uh, your trim you have a trim lever for commercial aircraft here and it's got the, the uh, markings for the degrees of flaps uh, it's also got a flap lever here more for again general navigation and these buttons here are they are allocated by default in the software and you'll see in a minute I'll show you what that looks like but um, there's no marking so you, you're free to allocate those, reallocate those as you please um, you've got a space here to stick a, um, a strip to remind you what you've programmed there is an enunciator panel here so you can see some lights are already up on the enunciator panel um, did I take you up gear down? probably did uh, and then you've got the basic autopilot settings autopilot on off and then you've got the various modes that you can toggle heading mode nav mode approach mode uh, should be back course really rather than rev um, altitude hold vertical speed and uh, this is marked as indicated airspeed IAS but it really should be marked as FLC flight level change that's how you're going to use that button there um, it comes up correctly on the screen, but it's not really correct there. Uh, if, if you've not looked at flight level change, um, that one there, you give it a target airspeed that you want to fly at, and then if you give it more throttle than it needs to be level, it will climb. If not, it'll uh, it'll descend using the trim to trim you up and down automatically uh, it's not an auto throttle you just have to give it the correct amount of throttle for it to do what you want it to do uh, this uh, knob here is increase or decrease a value and the value that you're changing is controlled by this multi position switch here so it clicks around uh, from altitude vertical speed heading course and indicated airspeed so you can change values there uh, in, in, in the autopilot so uh, that's what's available here so let's get into uh, looking at the actual flight simulator itself and I'll try and keep my camera up at the uh, top
So um, I'm in my Cessna and I've been playing around with the views and let's reset things here. I've left the tool tips on so you can um, sort of see where, where I'm looking. So let's have a look at the control options and see how they're set. This is default straight out of the box. The only thing I've done is I have loaded, um, downloaded, and installed the drivers from the Honeycomb sites. Uh, on the website it says you can use the uh, drivers uh, to create uh, different profiles for different aircraft and then as you go in further and you try to download the Microsoft version it says you can't in the Microsoft version you uh, allocate all those functions within either well it says within Microsoft itself in the flight simulator itself it doesn't mention other products like Axes and O's and SPAD.next there at all so uh, Again, a little bit of a dark secret, perhaps there. Uh, so it does tell you in the software in the uh, for Microsoft when you download it. The only reason you want the drivers is to uh, create a link to the LEDs on the yoke, the enunciator panel, and uh, here in the autopilot they've got LEDs behind that. If you don't put the drivers in, they they don't light up. And um, there's no options in the drivers. You can't get into them. The only option you've got is to uninstall them. So that's what all that is. So that's the only thing I've added. Uh, but again, I've followed the ex exact instruct instructions just like um, anybody would if they just purchased the um, controls. So the alpha, the yoke. As I said, a lot of stuff is set up for the camera. So all the various buttons are connected up to control the camera in the various different modes that you've got the instrument views and that it works i i if it's could be me that's being a bit clumsy because i've got my uh, have my logitech yoke set up in a different way <coughs> to change the views and i just haven't got used to how the order to press the buttons in or i'm so i might reprogram how these are working it's not so vital for me because I, d I do use a head tracker most of the time so I don't really need uh, a lot of um, uh, views and I tend not to go outside my plane and look from the outside um, breaks the realism a little bit standing outside the wing of your own aircraft but there you are um, so everything is set up pretty much as you'd, as you'd expect that um, you've got the avionics masters 1 and 2 set up and you can see that they are on at the moment because they're white if I press turn the buttons off on the yoke they switch on and off so you can see that happening there so all pretty much as you'd expect um, look at the Bravo <coughs> over here There are various things set up. If you want to find out what something's connected to, for instance, these unmarked buttons here, if you want to find out what they're connected to, uh, let's just close all this down so it's not messy. We can search by input here, and that one is set for beacon. Um, but it's also, there's beacon set on the um, yoke as well. They're the one that's labeled on the yoke so we've got this uh, double allocation here uh, turn that off and clear that and let's uh, search for the next one across so it's beacon the next one across is landing lights on and off and we'll search by one more input here taxi lights on Oh, we'll do one more while we're about it. Let's do the next one across. Strobes on. Um, interesting thing you find is you can't, having got switched that button on, this does not go away because it constantly knows you're transmitting and it's waiting for you as if you're holding a, a key down to press another one because you could have a combination of keys that you're trying to allocate. So I can't turn that off until I release those switches and then that will go away um, 
and it has a consequence. If we go back into the cockpit, and resume our flight. Um, so for instance here, this beacon switch here, I can't control it with the mouse anymore uh, because the switches on the yoke and the switch on the, uh, on the yoke and the quadrant are both transmitting constantly. The beacon is off, so I can't override that. It goes the switch on and it switches straight back off again because it's being told it's off. If I switch the beacon on, I'm using the one here on the uh, throttle quadrant that's on and that's off but if I try to use it here if I switch the beacon switch there again the beacon switch is now not working on the yoke despite the fact it was allocated in the controls uh, because this is still transmitting that it's off this is over overriding it and that seems to have priority doesn't matter what I do now with this switch here this one has priority over here. So I'm going to try a little live experiment. I've not really genuinely not tried this. It just occurs to me now. I'm going to deallocate this switch. I don't need that to be the beacon on the yoke. I'm going to clear that one and see if the, uh, to, on the throttle quadrant, and see if the one on the yoke takes effect. So let's go and have a look at our controls again. So the throttle quadrant, uh, I want to deallocate the beacon light. So uh, beacon lights on and off. You see it's actually transmitting the off at the moment. I want to get rid of both these allocations. Let's clear both of those. So I'm going to clear that one. Oh, and it wants me to make a new profile. So I'll call this uh, Bravo I'll put HC fan here, honeycomb. So I haven't lost the default. So beacon lights, uh, and we'll clear that one as well. So they haven't got beacon lights assigned. Uh, apply and save. Go back and resume my flight. And we'll see now what happens if I press, if I use this button here. Yep, that's working now. So that's taken that conflict away from here. Of course, that's not working now at all because that's deallocated. So I could put my parking brake on that or something like that. So that's that's how that works. Okay, and that's quite reassuring. So I can clear those unmarked ones and use the ones on the other. Let's have a look at, um, so the enunciator panel. What I'm gonna do is I'll um, kill my engines and we'll see how the, the enunciator, enunciator lights come up properly. So that should have stopped those. And I've got various warnings coming up. Low engine oil pressure, low fuel pressure, vacuum has come up. That's fine. Um, what's weird is the low voltage hasn't come up. I can see the low voltage has come up here, uh, but it hasn't come up on my enunciator panel you can, you can see down there this is low voltage here and that's not come up they do say it's a work in progress that uh, they will update things as they find them it's a bit of a shame that one of the major ones here the low voltage hasn't come up but uh, you know can't have everything uh, while we're zoomed in on the autopilot we'll have a look at how these controls here work so uh, autopilot on and off Fairly obviously that's working fine. Uh, there's no flight director on and off. Um, that's here, flight director on and off is here. But it's not on one of the buttons here. Uh, heading mode, like you can see it's heading mode here. And you can see it's lit up on heading mode there. So that's working fine. If I want to change my heading, if I uh, switch this to heading mode on here, you can probably see, I hope you can see that the heading bug is moving. And if you turn quickly and continue turning, it kind of accelerates its mode. 
and then you slow down again you back to one degree at a time so that's really quite nicely programmed I'm quite pleased with that so that's the heading mode and the heading bug um, nav that turns the nav mode on let's throw it in autopilot that should switch my nav mode on but uh, I'm not actually uh, tuned into anything so I'm not sure if we can do that but I have used it in a trial flight and it worked absolutely fine so the nav mode was working um, so look at altitude hold so I press altitude let's put it into altitude hold mode that's there and if I want to change my target altitude select this to out and you can see here there's my altitude that I'm going to try to capture so that's working there um, the vertical speed indicator is now in vertical speed mode turn this knob here to change my vertical speed so you can see here there's I want to climb or want to descend so that's that's there and if I want to go into flight level control mode there's my indicated airspeed here turn that to IAS and you'll see over here again this is the airspeed I'm going to try and capture so if my best rate of climb was 75 knots I could plug that in here so I've tried all the different modes um, Let's take it out of the FLC. I, I take, I put it in all the different modes at various points, and everything seems to be working fine. Uh, the course button is that working? Let's change the course. Oh, it's because I'm in GPS mode. Let's change that to there. Uh, now my course, yes, my course is changing now. Oh. And uh, nav mode. Yeah, it's now looking for a VOR, so that's that's working fine. Okay, so that's it. That's uh, the controls I've got. Uh, it's got this uh, clash going on between the buttons that are allocated here and the buttons allocated on the yoke. So that's easy to sort out. If you didn't want to use axes and those, and uh, you just wanted to use the default Microsoft settings, I think they're they're pretty, they're pretty good actually. Uh, but it would mean that every time you change aircraft, you would have to go into here and manually select a, your uh, different profiles if you had different things allocated for different aircraft. So the switches along here, you may want to change for different aircraft. So um, the advantage of axes and those is that it automatically automatically detects when you change aircraft and um, that will yeah, save you some bother uh, last thing I was going to show you was that of course you've got uh, flight control services you've got your various um, axes allocated here um, they do have the ability to go in and change the profile the sensitivity putting in uh, dead zones and things like that if that's what you're into i've been flying it just with the standard one and i th i think it's uh, really um pretty well set up about how sensitive it is perhaps that's a tiny bit your pitch is a tiny bit oversensitive um it, it may be just getting used to a new control i don't know and um as I said, the, the throttle quadrants are already assigned. So if I uh, power management, here we are. The throttle is already uh, defined. Uh, which one is going to be throttle one? There's throttle one. Throttle two, I haven't got a handle on yet yeah, I can move the lever you can see that's that's allocated to be throttle two at the moment this is allocated to be the propeller one 
so the allocations are controlled in here so that might be something I want to move over to axes and O's so that as I change aircraft it remembers it knows how to allocate those um, rather than have to go in and uh, make changes here or use or use the leaves in a weird configuration so I'll think about it and get back to you on that so anyway that's my first look at uh, the out of the box setup for uh, the two devices uh, not fiddling with anything apart from loading the drivers okay I'll um, make another video soon for you okay thanks a lot for watching